Hey everyone, I am back from Joe Fest, and I had planned to continue the studio tour with a part two and do a Joe Fest recap for you. But while I was at Joe Fest, beginning on Friday night, I started receiving messages from various people about different topics pertaining to the same situation. It started on Friday night when I was at dinner with uh, some of my friends there in Augusta. And uh, the situation just kept getting weirder. And again, completely different individuals, even through different mediums, all discussing aspects of the same scenario. So might as well kick this off with Friday night. So uh, Friday night, uh, I was sitting at dinner and we were just laughing, having a good time. And I get a message from someone claiming to be Chris Cron of the Fan Strike Back's stepson. Now, for the purposes of discretion, uh, I will not reveal this person's name because this person could be a minor. Uh, I don't know. And uh, I also don't know the veracity of this Facebook message. It came directly to our Retro Blasting Facebook page through Direct Messenger. In the message, uh, this individual alleges that uh, Chris Cron has tried to get away with, I don't want to use the word kidnap or anything like that because that's not any word he used, but that he has driven away with his sister, um, that there is a warrant out for him. Now again, we checked into this as best we could. We couldn't find any evidence of any kind of you know, warrant or anything like that. So again, all of this is very weird and very suspect. And why are we receiving these messages? Well, this individual then explained, sort of, that the reason they were contacting me was because they were hoping um, that even though they acknowledged that Chris and I might have a bad relationship because of stupid stuff Chris has done, that's a very, very polite way of dodging around the fact that he's stolen hundreds of thousands of dollars from people. Um, he was hoping that this individual was hoping that I would um, help them get the word out about a GoFundMe. Now, my first reaction to this was to laugh because this man has already taken more than enough money from the community and given nothing in return. Like, we're four years out from the Bantha and the 13 figures, and he hasn't delivered anything. This one sitting here, as you know, was foisted into my hands uh, without my expectation at Toylanta. Well, really, two, it was two Toylantas ago, it's definitely a year and a half ago now. And you can, I mean, I, I talked about it last year. And once again, you can see how bad it is. But um, the update on this is that there is no update. Uh, he teased a bunch of info about um, improving this plug thing to become a trap door. And then the last update was that everybody was mad about not getting their Banthas and his response to all of his customers was, well, you need to contact the factory and let them know how mad at them you are. This man takes responsibility for nothing. He'll take your money all day, but he won't take responsibility for anything. Meanwhile, the 13 figures are still unreleased. And that's despite him having come out with the Sand Trooper and the Rebel Fleet Trooper that were part of the 13 figure set, but he brought them out early as troop builder sets and would not send those figures to all of the people who had pre-ordered the 13 figure set of which I am one. So he was selling troop builder packs left and right with these two figures and sent none of them to the people who were waiting on their 13 figure set. And meanwhile, he puts the onus of resolving the Bantha situation onto the customer. You need to contact my factory. Hey, asshole, that's your job. You're the one that took their money. 
You're the one that's supposed to get these made and delivered. It's your job to contact the factory. But all of this is lies. All of this is lies and obfuscation. Um, and, the, and the fact that, that this person was saying they wanted to put together a GoFundMe, never defining for who. They never said how the GoFundMe was going to work and what it was going to be for and everything like that. They just wanted me to like get back to them and get the details about it so that I would consider putting that out there for everybody. Because, yeah, that's what I would believe in is asking my audience and asking this community to give this con man more money. And look, there's all kinds of possibilities here. This could be this could be legitimately his stepson. Uh, even though I won't reveal names, we did do some research and the last names did match up. Um, there was even a, a custody case that was opened uh, up uh, in late May that involves Chris Cron and somebody sharing this last name. Uh, I don't know what that's about. and I don't want to get into somebody's personal business. Um, as far as warrants out for his arrest and him, you know, being suicidal and all that stuff. I have no idea if any of that's true. And we considered the possibility, and that's the saddest part about this, is that Kron has lied so many times and compounded these lies so many times that the first thing that you do when you get an email like this is you assume it's actually Chris just trying to con people out of more money and play more dumb games with people. Um, at this stage, I don't think it's out of bounds to say that he is legitimately mentally ill. And that's not me trying to curry sympathy. It's one thing to be mentally ill and having robbed nobody. It's another thing to have, I mean, like grand larceny and then also, oh, but I'm mentally ill. So we considered the possibility that this was... Chris Cron using uh, his stepson's Facebook account, posing as his stepson in some weird attempt to stave off any kind of vitriol from his customer base and allow himself to disappear. Um, but the short version of this particular email is that while I do believe Chris Cron is a total screw up and I, I also maintain that he's a thief and a con man um, I cannot I cannot uh, I cannot confidently say that anything in that email is true I've always maintained since this whole Bantha thing happened uh, when when this prototype you know was thrust into my hands by Kevin Sexton we'll get into him in a minute where has all the money gone where has all the money for the 13 figures and the Bantha gone and I can say with confidence that a lot of it seems to have been eaten up by Chris Cron's domestic legal battles because there are, there are numerous settlement, like court case settlements about rental properties and other things on the record. Um, not, not even, I don't believe he owned the rental properties. I believe he got into disputes with the landlords uh, as the tenant about these properties. But again, I didn't look into it too much. Because my concern is not trying to get into his personal life. It's just trying to figure out how did a guy who took in so much money, like some estimates put it in the hundreds of thousands of dollars for these pre-orders. Where did all that money go? Especially given that this guy is still clearly a screw up. He's still his his life is still clearly in a shambles, and I, I have to believe that it got eaten up in settlements and everything else in his domestic life, for things we're not privy to. And it's very possible that this email that was sent is another attempt to try and drum up even more money from an unsuspecting public. Now, fortunately, um, you know, I'm not going to promote it. Therefore, I didn't ask for any details, and I don't even know if it's real. Um, 
we don't even know if this person is actually related to Kron at all. And I would have left it at that because I was prepared to just ignore that and move on. Um, but then I got a message from another person directly um, that was saying, and this person was not the same name as the other person. They were not on the same platform. It was from a, it was different delivery system entirely. And they said, uh, hey, you know, I've just been on the website uh, for Fan Strike Back, and suddenly all of the items are sold out. They're all listed as sold out. And um, he said something about the Facebook page for Fan Strike Back getting nuked or something like that. Because I have not been keeping up with any of that, I, I, I was like, well, I mean, shenanigans with Chris Cron abound. So there's no telling what's going on here. But in the back of my mind, I was going, hmm. Between the email I got from his alleged stepson and this discovery from an angry buyer, is it possible that Chris Cron is finally doing the runner that we've all suspected he was going to do? Because it's been four years and nothing. Let's bring up the third message that I got that's related to all this. Approximately four or five days later, it's hard to remember, I was already back from Joe Fest. This was like two or three days ago, I get an email from somebody named Ramon. Ramon went at me in this direct message. I've, I'd never spoken to him before. Like, there was no message history with him. And Ramon was going at me saying that I had betrayed Chris Cron, I had betrayed my friendship with him, my channel was in the toilet now, you know, I was, I was making all these mistakes, and, and that Chris Smith, the man behind Stan Solo, that uh, I had backed the wrong horse and that Chris Smith was going to take all of our money and run. So I told the guy, I said, um, you do realize that that's literally what your friend Chris Cron has done, the man you're defending. He has taken hundreds of thousands of dollars from people, delivered nothing for four years, played all kinds of dumb games and delay tactics, and now all the evidence is suggesting he's going to run. And the guy never wanted to address that. He just kept coming back around, telling me how I'd messed up, telling me how Chris Smith was a criminal. I find that hilarious. See, Chris Cron for the last four years has drummed everybody up who still believes in this man. And I, I do not know why. All of his friends and followers who still hang on his every word and they know that he hasn't delivered on these major projects they know that they know it's been four years but they don't question that not a not a lick of it and they buy into his whole constant drumbeat that chris smith is the criminal he's the one that's going to take all of our money and run even though ever since he made that first han solo stormtrooper He's been nothing but delivering on everything he's promised with amazing quality. So he hasn't taken a lot of money, not invested it in anything, made us wait years and years and years, and then mysteriously run away. He's never done that. You know, past behavior dictates future behavior. And in the case of Chris Cron, the past behavior is all of this is going down the toilet. It's been down the toilet for a long time, but you know what I mean. All of this is going down the toilet. Chris Cron is actively avoiding responsibility for any of this. He won't tell us where the money is. He's changed the return policy in, in running steps throughout this process because originally it was pre-orders. Then when people started demanding refunds about a year and a half in, he, he changed the policy on the website and said, no, 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 this was always a crowdfund. This was always a Kickstarter. So there are no refunds until the products come in. Amazing. You can't get a refund until we deliver you a product. That doesn't even make sense. That's just straight up predatory behavior. He doesn't have the money to give back. He has stolen it from all of us. It's going to be nothing short of a class action lawsuit that's going to even figure out what happened. And even with that, I doubt this man has any resources left to pay out into a class action lawsuit. I don't know what he did with all this money. But I highly suspect that it's gone. 
And if it's not gone and it's in some offshore account or whatever, which I doubt because this man is not that smart, then maybe there's a chance to recoup something. But I just don't think so. I think we're dealing with I think we're dealing with a mentally ill individual. And when you're dealing with people like that, as as I've had experience with in the past, there's there's no light at the end of that tunnel for the victims. The only thing that that you can do is get distance from this individual and never associate with them again. But we have a problem. We have a problem with the people like this Ramon guy. Because when I countered to Ramon that he's stolen all this money, he hasn't delivered, he's literally trying to disappear off the map now. There are people alleging to be his stepson saying that you know he's threatening suicide and there's warrants out for him and all this stuff, all this drama. Ramon just simply said, Oh yeah, I know. He he got into uh he got in over his head. That's what he said. He got in over his head with the pre-orders. He just dismisses that like da 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 da, and then makes some smug claim about how that's why he doesn't pre-order anything. Okay, great. So even though you as an individual don't pre-order anything to protect yourself from these kinds of situations, you think that because you didn't pre-order stuff with Chris Cron, that that means that everything that happened to all those other fellow collectors who did pre-order, that's their fault, not your friend Chris's? So your friend is totally within his rights to steal from everybody? While you accuse a man who hasn't stolen from anyone in this community, you accuse him of being a thief? Wow. You know what Chris Smith has been up to while Chris Cron has been pulling all of these shenanigans for four years? Making products for people of high quality. And yes, even through COVID, which Chris Cron used as an excuse as to why he's had these massive delays. Oh, it's it's COVID. Oh, it's these factories. Oh, it's this. It's that. There's always an excuse because he stole the money. This just showed up yesterday. Timing couldn't have been more impeccable. This is Chris Smith's Stan Solo Rebel Fleet Trooper in characteristic, amazing Kenner style quality. And you can get it in a robust vintage style card back, or you can get it loose as always. Once again, Chris Smith, remember, remember everybody, he's a thief and he's a criminal and he's going to run away with our money. We're just too stupid to realize it. He's been doing these amazing Star Wars figures for easily five years. I think it's five years. I'm not real good with the timeline, but for at least a half decade, if not a little longer than that, he's been delivering for us consistently. But oh, one day, one day he's going to take all the money and run. No, he's putting his money back into his products and delivering said products to the people that bought them. It's a novel concept. Chris Cron should look into it. But Chris Cron has effectively hoodwinked the dim-witted among us, of which Ramon is one. Ramon is clearly not very bright, and um, there are a lot of those types on the internet. Um, there's one born every minute, and you know you, you find the right people, you can sell them anything. And he has sold them the idea that no, he's not the criminal, he's the victim. And the rest of us, the rest of us were just foolish to place pre-orders. And the rest of us were just making the wrong friends with evil people like Chris Smith. If you are still at this point, knowing, even if you didn't place the pre-orders, if you still knowingly try to buy stuff from this man or, or, or actively defend this man, Chris Cron, with the knowledge that, yeah, it's been four years and many of your fellow collectors remain screwed over by this guy. You are somebody that I certainly don't want in my life. Because even when I'm not somebody that got screwed over by a Hasbro HasLab or a Mattel Creations crowdfund, I do feel for the people that, that got screwed over. I have no room in my life for sociopaths and people that are just out for number one. 
And I, but, but what I really have a problem with is people who take it the extra mile and say, I'm out for number one. That's sadly very common. But then they go an extra mile and say, and I like this guy who screwed over all these people. I'm not even going to acknowledge it. I'm just going to dodge that question. I'm going to dodge that fact, which is what Ramon did in our conversation. I would bring up facts and he would just dodge around those facts and continue to tell me how my channel's going downhill and how I screwed up and how I was rude because I used bad words in my conversation with him. He told me at one point in our conversation that because I used bad words that I'd threatened him. And I said, no, I used bad words because I was being rude to you. That's not a threat, but he's dim-witted and that's, that's what they do. Before this goes on any longer, let's discuss the other elephant in the room, which is Kevin Sexton, the toy smuggler. Where does he fit into all this? And why is that relevant to this conversation? Well, one, the only reason this thing is sitting in front of me is because Kevin Sexton was the designer, sculptor, creator, and apparently project manager at Fan Strike Back of this project. And as you probably remember from when I did my breakdown slash takedown of this thing, this was clearly not a manufactured plastic toy. This was a resin pour, which was not what we were promised. Um, it's got a furniture upholstery tack holding the saddle on. It can't stand up, as you can see. It's a really, really sad piece of business. But what's more important uh, to the context of this series of events is that when I realized, after getting this home from Toylanta that year, and I realized how bad it was, I reached out to Kevin, and I said, you've got to get out from, from under this. You've got to come clean. You have got to be transparent about what went down with Fan Strike Back. You've got, to, you've got to lay your cards on the table and tell everybody in the toy community how this happened if you hope to salvage your reputation. And I actually have a message from him saying he replied back saying i want to i want to get out of this i just don't know how i'd already explained to him how and then a few days later we had the retro blasting uh, live stream where we and i recused myself from that if you recall where people could call in who were customers and try and get answers kevin and chris cron were on that call together and both of them decided to triple down on the idea that everything I'd said about this was a lie and they were trying to destroy my credibility in the face of years and years of waiting for products that either don't exist or are completely subpar. And in this case, this is clearly a resin pour attempt that they never then delivered to the customers. The customers are still waiting on their Banthas. They've been told, you got to contact that factory, that big bad factory that won't make our stuff. It's your job now to contact the factory and get your toy. <clears throat> I firmly believe that Chris Cron did not pay that factory, if it actually is real at all. That he never paid that factory to begin work on said product. And I'm sure that factory was like, we don't want to do business with this guy. Anyway, back to Kevin Sexton. As the project manager for this thing, I don't know if he was paid some kind of stipend, but I have to believe he was because he was also a sculptor that also made that crappy Slave Leia that Fan Strike Back sold last year or the year before, whenever it was, 2021-22. And they were selling it around the 13 figures in the Bantha that still weren't out. Kron was doing everything possible to not get those products out. He has done everything possible to dance around those products. The most expensive ones that people have been waiting for the longest that they've already paid for. And so I have to believe that as a project manager for this, and a sculptor, Kevin Sexton, was paid on some level by the fans strike back for a certain amount of work, which means Kevin Sexton took some of that pre-order money 
for his own salary, his own wage, his own paycheck. And while in the background claiming that he wanted to get out from under this, he made no attempt to do so and then tripled down with Chris Cron on this. And then, you know, they said it was a factory, but it feels like these were resin pours out of a, you know, back garage somewhere in Georgia. And then, you know, like a, like a, a craft shed, shed or something like that. And then they said, no, 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 we've got a factory doing it. He was just prototyping. And then that factory fell under. And now there's another factory. But now you got to call that factory and, and try and do some sort of grassroots campaign to get this thing that you paid hundreds of dollars for. Do you see how ridiculous this starts to sound when you then hear people defending this man? No, Chris Cron's really the good guy. It's Chris Smith who's the bad guy. Really? The climax, the sad, whimpering climax to this whole story is that I was supposed to film this video yesterday and I got the thumbnail done and then I just kind of waited. I don't know why. I just said, I don't feel like doing this. It was four in the afternoon. And I said, I don't want to do this today. I'll, I don't like doing these kind of videos anyway. I don't, I don't relish any part of this. I, I wanted everybody to have their stuff and I wanted my stuff and I wanted all this to be over. But we're now four years out dealing with a man who has lied, delayed, cheated, stolen, um, even told certain customers that because they complained too much, they would not get their products or a refund. And the money that they put into those products would go into his legal funds to fight them in court. This man is insane. Like, he's insane. And Kevin Sexton has, by and large, disappeared um, after deciding to back Chris Cron in all this. He has decided to make Chris Cron his ride or die, um, despite what he said to me in the background. And as part of that, um, mysteriously this morning, I was contacted by somebody completely different from the other four people. First, there was the alleged stepson, then there was the angry customer, then there was the sycophant Ramon, uh, and now it was somebody through um, Facebook Messenger um, who was letting me know that one of these Banthas, of which there can't be that many, I would think, was sold on eBay with a box and everything for over $500. And where was it sold out of? Battleground Comics in Dalton, Georgia. Battleground Comics, um, that is where Kevin Sexton did I don't know what, if you'd call it freelance work, but he was closely associated with them. He helped them source and find vintage toys that he would then repair and put out for sale in the shop. And Dalton, Georgia, well, you know the rest. If it wasn't Kevin Sexton selling that Bantha that nobody else has gotten, by the way, because see, the ethical thing to do would have been to have come clean about the whole Bantha thing in the first place and go public with everything that happened. But Kevin didn't do that. He ran to ground. Mr. Taekwondo, Mr. Brave Wrestler guy is hiding from this whole situation. Strength and honor, right? So the best case scenario is that he gifted one of these to the owners of Battleground Comics, and they unwittingly sold it this past weekend just to get rid of it. But the optics are really bad. And if it is actually Kevin Sexton using the Battleground Comics eBay store to sell it because he has sold other stuff for them online as part of his whole thing with being their toy guy, then this is really bad because he knows how many people still don't have this piece of garbage thing that they were promised. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. This, this, this is in lieu of scores of other figures that have shown up in the last four years from Stan Solo that we have covered on this channel. You put your money down on the barrel head and Stan Solo actually gives you what you're promised in a timely fashion with impeccable quality. But please keep telling me how Chris Cron is the good guy 
and Chris Smith is the bad guy. How many more excuses is that little corner of the Star Wars toy community going to keep making for this screw-up? This thief. This liar. I got nothing left on this. I can't confirm the veracity of the email that I originally received from the alleged stepson. I'm not going to try. There's no good resolution to that email. In other words, that whole GoFundMe thing, why, why would that be helpful? If it's, it's, it's bad, no matter how you look at it. If it's just a, a, a further attempt at a hoax to, to grift more money off people, that's really bad. If it's a GoFundMe to try and get this guy help, that's really bad. If it's a GoFundMe to try and get funding for these children that he's allegedly done a runner on with one in tow, that's also really bad. Where does any of this, where does any of this reflect poorly on Chris Smith or the YouTube channels that support Stan Solo's stuff and support his efforts and highlight his efforts. How, how are we the bad guys in that scenario? All of, all of it surrounding Chris Cron is bad. Every single bit of it is, is not good. No matter, no matter which way you parse the situation, no matter what possibility you look at, all the possibilities are really bad. Four years late, totally mismanaging the company, that's bad. All that money that's disappeared that clearly didn't go into the development of this stuff, that's bad. Getting in over his head on the pre-orders, that's really bad. Telling all of his followers for four years that Chris Smith is actually the criminal and that these YouTube channels are all liars and convincing them of that, that's really bad and underhanded. So if you consider yourself a person that has good critical thinking skills uh, or a person of good moral fiber, a person with some amount of dignity and integrity, if you consider yourself any of those things and you're still positively tied to this fan strike back company in any way or the personality of Chris Cron, you need to take a hard look in the mirror at yourself and ask yourself what the fuck you're doing.